Hello and welcome to a fresh new edition of Bazaar Morning Call. It's a Friday, Friday morning, which means that uh, the end of the week is inside. I'm Prashant with me, my colleague Sonia and Nigel. <laughs> everyone is cheerful, everyone is smiling. You know, that's, that's the magic of a midweek holiday, right? You come back from the midweek holiday and then bang, it's Friday again. So <laughs> there's got to be cheer because oh, of that. Absolutely. But it also leaves you wanting for more, right? Uh, which we won't get now. I don't know when is the next two, uh, midweek two holiday. Weeks two weeks uh, more. Yeah, the Bali holiday we'll get, right? Uh, now. Yes, that's Monday. a Monday. Uh, yeah, uh, Monday. A Monday. Monday, yes. Yeah. But All this right. week, there's a lot come. The, the many the festivals coming on Sunday as well. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, uh, you know, with, on that optimistic note, let's uh, start with the market. Just a quick uh, you know, a couple of things in terms of uh, how we are looking. Uh, overnight, it was an absolutely choppy kind of uh, session, very, very choppy. Uh, and uh, by the close, U.S. markets indices were down about one, one and a half odd percent or so. So it's largely a wait and watch ahead of the jobs data number, which we get later today. Uh, and I think uh, that is the d one data point which will help in clarifying what happens next. Uh, I'm talking about the September non-farm payrolls data for which expectations are that uh, the number will be around the 260,000 odd mark. Uh, and I think, uh, you know, the criticality of that at this juncture cannot be overemphasized. Oil prices are the one big risk that's uh, almost knocking at 95 uh, and uh, the dollar rupee, I mean, the rupee is now almost 82 uh, here. But, uh, you know, in the uh, NDF market, that is already at about 82.3 or so. So we'll see where the uh, rup dollar rupee rate settles as we open up this morning. That's the other risk. But all of it, of course, is connected to what happens out of the U.S. in terms of the dollar, etc. Uh, and that ties in back uh, to the data point, which is the jobs number, the one big data point that the Fed is focused on. ASX is indicating a slightly Lower start by about 45 points or so. Sonia, Nigel, hi. Hi, morning, morning, hi. Nigel. It's like those minor roadblocks, right, for the Indian markets, that is. Every point, there's a data point from the US and then the market sort of digests that and then moves on uh, with equal ferocity. I guess that's what's going to happen in the next few days as well. Purely for today, the SGX Nifty is indicating a start in the red, down about 30-odd points. That's because uh, the global markets were under pressure. So the Dow saw a fall of almost 350 points overnight. And, you know, as Prashant was also pointing out, all eyes will now be on the U.S. jobs data that come out later today. Uh, there are some estimates that are even looking at 275,000 jobs. And here's the problem with that. If there is a very strong payroll data, then it adds to the, you know, the services index data, the private payrolls as well. And then the Fed may need a tougher stance to slow the economy. So... It's kind of a lose-lose situation for equity markets both ways. But in any case, that's a data point that we're going to track very closely. Uh, for the Nifty itself, we've conquered that 17,300 mark yesterday. So the uptrend is intact, although there may be a few hurdles along the way. FI has bought in the cash markets for the second straight day, uh, bought about 280-odd crores. So, you know, lots of ifs and buts, but I think the big data point to watch, as you said, would be the jobs data. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, Sonia, ahead of this uh, big number, because you don't know what the number is going to be, U.S. markets have had a very tentative trading session. So why do, why do you want to kind of go out there and take a big call one way or the other? I think it makes sense to, and that's why I said wait and watch, right? Uh, you know, it's not as if one session... Uh, is going to kind of leave you out of money. I mean, better to wait and watch rather than sort of jump headlong, taking a position or a view one way or the other. No point doing that. Uh, so the global follow-through that we were talking about, the bullish follow-through that we were talking about, was interrupted largely because of fears around this. Uh, and even before the jobs data num uh, has come in, you had three f regional Fed presidents who came in and sounded very hawkish, saying that rates need to be higher for longer, restrictive, all that once again. So... Uh, that rigmarole continues. Uh, as, as I said, 260 or thousand, 260 to 270 or thousand is basically where you want to see this number at. Anything over 300 thousand is going to be is going to shine the spotlight in a very positive way on the e U.S. economy, which also, uh, on the flip side, means maybe all this higher uh, rates for longer is going to come true. And anything below 200,000 is going to, going to be considered extremely weak, which means the economy is slowing much faster than expected. There is, of course. The other debate which is happening is, is the Fed already over-tightened. And I think, uh, you know, this data point will talk to that. Two-year, by the way, the two-year uh, Treasury yield is back above 4%. 4 Actually, it take, took out 4.22, which is an important technical level. Uh, uh, but again, you know, these levels are also on hold till we get this data point. The dollar index, it was looking very stretched. And that's why it sold off from 115, 116 kind of levels. But the positioning is a lot cleaner. So 
uh, it, it's lighter in that sense. So if the, if the data is very strong, I mean, you could see the dollar index uh, zipping higher uh, as well. So uh, as I said, wait and watch. The Nifty, in terms of levels, turned south from the 50% retracement uh, of the down move from September 15th to September 30th. This is the 50% Fibonacci retracement, which stands at 17,421. The high yesterday was a little higher, but approximately that's the level you'd want to keep in mind. That's the first level to take out in that sense. Banks lost steam. And, you know, bulk of the reason why the market came off is because uh, momentum in banks started to fizzle out a little bit. IT, by the way, the IT index has done 3.5% this week. Is this the start of some basing out or is this just some position building ahead of the earnings season, which is not very far away? We'll find out. It's possible it's the former, that this is actually the, the beginning of perhaps a slow process where things will start to base out. I mean, you know, I've said this three times, fourth time. This also will depend largely on the health of the U.S. economy. 70, 65 to 70 percent of IT services revenues are the U.S. and uh, markets will be keenly awaiting the health of the U.S. economy. Uh, Crucial to watch, as I said, oil. Oil prices are up almost $11 from the lows last week. $11 in a week. Uh, and uh, it's marching higher. Above 96, it exits a downward uh, sloping trend line, uh, a channel actually, which has been in place for the last four months. You want it contained. Rupee is falling, which again raises the risk of some equity outflows. We saw that happening last time. A rupee weakened very substantially. And then it uh, fell as the dollar started to behave itself. So... You want these two uh, factors uh, sort of well-behaved and well-contained as well. So there's a lot, a lot of moving parts, but the big one is the jobs number. And ahead of that, I would say you just want to wait it out. Sonia, Nigel, hi. Well, uh, morning, guys. Uh, you know, I I'm just looking at the key reason that we've seen a bit of a bounce. It's because of the institutional flows. And the few trading sessions we've had in October, the FIs and the DIs, both of them, their buyers, so close to around $300 million between them is what uh, they have bought. And for me, that's the biggest trigger right now. You know, that's the only reason that the markets are staying afloat, because otherwise there are fairly cautious signs, whether you're looking at Brent crude prices, the US 10-year yield, or even the dollar index. But let's get to the FNO setup. Now, in a live trading market, well, you have the premium on the Nifty or the discount that you track. And yesterday, it moved into a discount, telling you that there were some short positions that were created. So on the FI side, it appears there's a bit of an arbitrage opportunity that's taking place. They're buying in cash and they're shorting futures. Even yesterday, they added close to 3,500 contracts on the short side. They continue to remain net short. They have close to 80% of their positions on the short side. But yesterday, on the Nifty that appeared, there were short positions created. But on the Nifty Bank, there were some unwinding of long positions, you know, because there was uh, some shedding in terms of open interest out there. Moving to the options data, well, the 17,400 call, 17,500 call, very, very active in yesterday's trading session. And there was aggressive writing being seen out there. The glimmer of hope is the 17,400 put as well added close to 18 lakh shares. That gave you a sense that there is some kind of writing even at those levels. So what's the crucial level you're tracking? As we said yesterday, 17,450, 17,500, that's the resistance zone. On the downside, there is support at around 17,150 to around 17,200. That I say because of the writing we saw at around the 17,400 put. The technical levels as well come up for you on the screen. 20 to 50 DMA. Hurdle levels on the upside. On the downside, at least as of now, the market believes the 200 DMA will hold out. Just a quick word on the Nifty Bank as well. Yesterday, there was some unwinding of long positions. It appeared there was some bit of uh, you know profit taking or uh, some bit of fatigue seen on that index. We have the 50 DMA. That's 250 points away from these levels. That holds the key, according to me. You know, if it, the Nifty Bank can defend the 50 DMA, then the bulls will be there with a bit of a hope. The one that's making me uncomfortable is the way we saw the rupee move yesterday towards that 82 odd mark. So an eye on the rupee, as well as keep an eye out on the Nifty Bank 50 DMA, crucial factors for trade today. Oh, absolutely. And the SGX Nifty for now is indicating a sharp uh, 50 point slide. But I'm also watching out for uh, the corporate business updates that have come through. And the big takeaway really is that things are definitely improving across India Inc. So just take a look at what we got in the last 24 hours, right? Titan has reported a very strong Q2 update. Uh, the overall sales growth came in at 18%. Uh, Kalyan Jewelers just reported an update a while back. Very good double-digit growth over there. Phoenix Mills consumption is back in a big way. In fact, back to pre-COVID levels, 130% of Q2 of FY20. Uh, so clearly, there's a pickup over there. And uh, even in the financials, right? I mean, Equita Small Finance Bank has seen 20% growth in their deposits. So all around looking good. The only pocket that ha that is seeing a slowdown is uh, the core FMCG businesses. So whether it's Dabur. Uh, GCPL, Marico, 
pointed to both margin pressure as well as lower volumes. In fact, in the last 12 hours, Dabur said that their consolidated revenues is expected to grow at just mid-single digits. So, uh, and in any case, so stocks have factored that in as well. Most of these stocks have been underperformers in the last uh, you know, week or so. Dabur in the last one month has lost about 5%. So, barring this pocket where there are still margin pressures and perhaps the rural markets have not recovered as much, uh, the rest of India Inc. seems to be in fine fettle. But uh, for now, we'll be tracking all of these stocks and more for you. Uh, let's also get you some opinion on the equities front. We have Rhythm Desai of Morgan Stanley who says that the market continues to fight a wall of worry and we see triggers on both sides for a major move. He believes the market seems poised for heightened volatility and higher correlations with a likely moderation in relative returns post India's stellar performance in recent months. Rhythm has an overweight on financials, technology, consumer discretionary and industrials and an underweight all other sectors. He also replaces Godrej Consumer with Titan in their focus list, emphasizing the continued preference for consumer discretionary stocks with a focus on the coming strong festive spending. Well, we've got an equity call. This is from Sridhar Sivaram of Enam Holdings. Uh, Sridhar expects the market to be volatile for the next few months as it has been for the year. This is mostly due to global macro factors, but he also believes uh, as the dust settles, the prospects for Indian market is looking very promising for 2023, the remaining remainder of uh, 2023. Okay, we have one eye on the rupee as we were telling you earlier. It's an all-time low of 81.94 that the rupee closed at yesterday. Bhaskar Panda of HDFC Bank says the dollar index rose to 112 again as the Fed policymaker spoke of inflation fighting ahead of the jobs data. He adds that crude oil rose post the OPEC plus agreed to cut production ahead of the winter. In the Indian markets, he says dollar demand was seen from importers as the dollar INR hovered just below the 82 mark. But given the overnight developments, Bhaskar says, the dollar INR could move past 82 and trade in a range of 82 to 82.40 for the day. Well, on bonds, uh, we've got uh, uh, Bhaskar Panda saying that uh, the Indian bond yields rose also rallied post-recent correction as oil prices rebounded. He says the 10-year benchmark bond yield could trade in a range of between 7.45 to 7.5% for the day. Well, we have lost